Hey guys, this is a Fox 38 Grip 2 damper. I'm going to be changing the travel and the damper oil and the lower leg oil and not replace any seals and show you some hacks. So first step, let all the air out. Remove the rebound knob with a small Allen key. Then loosen the two lower feet on the fork. The air spring side is a 10 millimeter and the other side is like 14 or 15 millimeter. Now leave the socket on there and hammer on the socket to release the lower legs from the upper legs, both sides here. Now when you pull the two nuts off the lower leg, there is crush washers in there and don't lose them because you may need to reuse them like me. And I will show you a quick hack at the end of the video so you can reuse them to save a little money. Now get two bowls underneath the lower legs and release all the fluid from them. I'm assuming you're a home mechanic and you have two bowls in your house so this works great. Now, I'm assuming you're some dude in your garage like myself, not a professional bike shop. So we catch that fluid and we do an inspection of it and the lower leg fluid is really clean. So I'm confident to reuse every single seal, o-ring and washer in this fork. If it was a muddy mess like this fork, it would be a no-go. You need to replace everything if it's heavily worn. Now take the lower legs and pull those foam rings out with a pick. All the tools you need to do this job are gonna be linked in the description. Whenever we're servicing the fork, do a thorough inspection of everything. We're looking for cracks, broken parts, anything that could cause potential issues later on down the line. Now, you don't have to remove the top cap to change the travel on this fork, but I'm gonna put the correct amount of tokens in it. It's a good idea to have the correct tool, but I will show you how to take it off with a crescent wrench later. To remove the air spring, it's a little bit difficult and you're going to need a good set of picks. There's no snap ring under here. Fox uses these weird clip ring things and you have to kind of wedge under them with a pick and a screwdriver. And this can take a little bit of time you need to be careful not to scratch the inner stanchion. So the goal on this ring is to pry up one part of it and then the rest of it will pull out. It's kind of a two piece ring holding the air spring in. Once you get the ring out, you can pull the air spring cartridge assembly out and it's gonna take some force because I probably didn't release the pressure from it correctly. So that's the Fox 38 air spring, a super unique design. To pull the air piston assembly out of this rod, you have to torch the bottom and it takes a little bit of work. It's not fully required to change the travel because we're just going to swap a whole new cylinder in there. Now here's both air springs. So one is in a stuck up position and one is in a stuck down position. I'm not super experienced as far as Fox 38 air springs, but I just sent it and I put it in the fork and everything went okay. So just get a light coating of grease and put it on the O-rings on the outside of the air spring and pop it in the fork. Now reinsert that clip ring with your pocket screwdriver one layer of spring at a time. Make sure it's fully seated in the groove before moving forward. I removed the top cap to put one extra token in it. This is a 170 millimeter fork and from the factory it comes with two tokens. It's very important to start with the tokens that Fox says to start with. There's no right and wrong token setting but this is a very good starting point if you're new to this fork. I have an entire setup guide for on trail setup with the Fox 38. Everything's seated and apart. So put like 20 PSI in this fork and carefully check that the spring is fully seated and the rod goes back and forth. Now I suggest dynoing the fork like this cause you want to catch mistakes early. You don't want to pull the whole thing back apart after you put the lower leg oil in it. Now optional step here to clean the foam rings in alcohol if you're going to reuse them. So after you spray them, squeeze them into a paper towel and they'll come out super clean. 
Now get your trusty handy dandy two bowls and fill them up with the 20 weight Fox Gold Oil and the damper oil. Now you're going to take the foam rings and you're going to soak each foam ring in two different baths of oil. To clean the lower legs, you're going to spray alcohol into them and then pack them full of paper towels, these blue paper towels, and then you're going to pull the paper towels back out and make sure there's quite a bit of friction inside of the lower legs so it squeezes all the grease and dirt. So push down, flip it around, push it back, get a long set of needle nose pliers and pull the paper towel out. Now take the foam ring that's soaked in the 20 weight gold oil and put it on the air spring side and you soak the other foam ring in the damper oil and that goes on the damper side obviously. Now when you join the upper and the lower legs together, you need to pull them apart, pull the energizer spring out, and do anything it takes to not rip the foam rings underneath the dust wipers. So we need to fill the lower legs up with oil. So on the air spring side, make sure you're on the air spring side, the one with the Schrader valve. We're going to put 25 cc's or 30 cc's, whatever's on the screen, I can't remember the exact amount inside the lower leg and make sure it goes inside the lower leg and don't be afraid to make two passes on the oil like I'm doing here because it can be kind of hard to suck it out of the bowl. So I only have one syringe so this is a super important step. So you have to clean the tool super good because we don't want 20 weight gold oil inside of the damper side. You're going to find out later in this video why you don't want 20 weight gold. Basically the compression assembly is open inside the lower legs so that's why we put compression oil on the other side. Now you're going to put 40 cc's in the damper side with a clean tool. Shove it in there and you're good to go. Before you put any tools away in this oily mess, fill the fork up with like 30 psi so the travel fully extends and cycle it a bunch of times to make sure you didn't do anything wrong and everything feels smooth. Now that's how you change the travel in your Fox 38. It's pretty simple and easy and you got this. But we're going to rewind in time and do the full damper service. Well I guess it's not a full damper service, we're just going to change the fluid within the damper. Now changing the fluid in the grip too, in the grip, the one with the sweeper dial is virtually identical. So you're gonna pull the small Allen key out of the adjuster knob and pull that adjuster knob out. Now it's definitely not recommended to use a crescent wrench on the top caps of Fox forks. But if you use this technique, you can fully get away with it. It's a 28 millimeter on the compression side. So wrap the CSU around your arms push down on the crescent wrench with that one finger as hard as you humanly can. And when you turn the crescent wrench, be careful where you turn it because you can turn it into the CSU and peel the paint off. And check this out, absolutely no damage on that top cap. The damper assembly will pull out of the fork. And it's a really cool compression assembly. It's probably my favorite one to work on because it's extremely easy and you got this at home with no special tools. But let me show you something right here. The reason we put compression oil in the lower leg of the compression side is this cartridge can bleed itself, it has a little hole in it, and it's absolutely the best design on the market because you're not contaminating lower leg fluid with damper oil and this thing self purges. So you're supposed to buy these special shaft clamps that clamp around the damper assembly. But if you take the top cap and gently clamp it in a table vise, you can basically pull the top cap out with a crescent wrench. So after it's perfectly clamped, not too tight, we get our crescent wrench on the bottom of the compression assembly on the wrench flats and we twist the top cap off. So when the top cap comes out, there's a spring underneath it. This is identical to the grip, the grip two. They're virtually the same damper. They just have different adjustments. 
Now gently take the upper compression assembly and put this on the table. Now, as long as you don't take this apart, this job is extremely easy. And keep in mind, this is the home mechanic kit. I don't think any bike shop's gonna do this for you because they don't want the liability of something going wrong. You should replace all the O-rings in this assembly, but I've gotten away with not doing it many times. You take the lower rebound rod and you pump this until that damper tube is completely empty of the old damper oil. If we check the damper oil out here, it's in pretty good condition, just like the lower leg fluid. So the lower leg fluid can tell you if you need a damper service. Now make sure you use the five weight Fox oil, the Teflon infused stuff. We are gonna take that compression assembly with the top cap removed and fill it up with oil. After she's completely full of oil, this is what you're gonna do, okay? You're gonna take the rebound rod, that lower piece, and you're gonna stroke it, baby. Stroke it until she stops making noise. And you can't look down at the oil to make sure there's no bubbles in it, but be careful because it can't jizz on your face. Now pull the rebound rod all the way down to the bottom, take a rag, wrap it around the compression assembly, and keep pumping until it comes out of this hole, the purge hole. I think they call it the bleed hole, actually. So pump, 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 make sure no air is coming out of the bleed hole. Pull the rod all the way back down. Double check it one more time. Pull it down. It can be hard to pull down, warn you there. And when it's in the fully down position, we're gonna top it up to the bleed hole till it's overfilling. Now the oil's coming out of the bleed hole. Did you get that part? Just the bleed hole, not the very top of the fork. It will purge out of the bleed hole. Now we're gonna take the compression assembly that we should have replaced O-rings on, and we're gonna put a light coating of grease on the lower base valve thing. So we're gonna stick it into the fork and it's gonna be puking out of the bleed hole. And my compression assembly will not go in the fork and I don't know what's going on because I didn't open the compression. So hope you learned that from me. Open the compression knob and it will go in the fork. Fairly easy, you kinda gotta wiggle it in there. If you forgot this step, just grab the compression assembly or the knob assembly and put it in the fully open setting, low speed and high speed. But if you make that mistake, you have to start that process all over again, fill it back up, pump it, pump it, pump it, let it purge out of the bleed hole and then grab your compression assembly and slowly stuff it in while oil is coming out of the bleed hole. Now with the upper compression assembly in the fully wide open position, it will push into the fork and you won't have too many problems. But be careful because it does jizz all over the place and make sure the rod is in the fully down position when you're stuffing it in. Take the top cap and put it back in the table vise and tighten the whole assembly back up with your crescent wrench on the lower wrench flats. Now putting the top cap back on with the crescent wrench isn't super hard. You can fully get away with this. Just don't do full turns because you can turn the tool into the CSU like I told you before. Now I already covered the lower leg service in the first chapter of the video, so you can rewind and watch that. Now, while the fork is an oily mess, you need to basically turn the rebound to the fully fast setting, the fully slow setting, and dyno the fork on the ground and make sure the rebound is working and the compression, because you did do a risky thing by not replacing all the O-rings inside the compression assembly. Now here's the trick to reuse the crush washers. On the lower legs, the 15 and the 10, tighten those as much as you can without breaking anything. And then you need to get a hammer and you need to hammer on your ratchet. This will basically re-crush your already crushed crush washer and you will be able to reuse it without leaking. I've already rode this fork and it does not leak. There's the secret hack to reuse the crush washers. Hope this video helped you. You've gotta click this video on the screen, the Fox 38 setup guide, and then you're gonna be completely dialed.